I think you are now able to see the screen. And this Kappa test, basically, we want to find out uh, with the two examiners have given the same uh, marks or not, as far as pass or fail. This is uh, uh, examiner one and this is examiner two. And student was passed or not passed by these two examiners. So now we want to find out how much is the agreement between two. We can also see that the diagnosed properly or not by the trainer and trainee. Let's say uh, there is a uh, professor of medicine he is examining the patient and say Newman is there or not. And the assistant professor B is telling whether there's pneumonia there or not. And how much agreement is there between two? That we'll be looking at. One means complete agreement and zero is no agreement. We need to find out K value over here. So I think uh, all are attending over here, at least uh, 16 of you. So uh, you think of uh, such a condition in your case also, say where you can find this situation. And uh, I think uh, you can write in the chat box uh, for exactly, let's say that uh, I, I want to compare, compare judgment between uh, in this case, I was taking medicine, but then we can take other also uh, judgment about which medicine to be given uh, to treat, treat uh, PPH. Uh, which instead of which about factor seven, factor seven to be given in PPH or not, or not. Now we, we want to compare between the pharmacologist and the OG specialist. And this can happen in this, what I would say that uh, this is a rate A is a, let's say, pharmacologist and B is a gynecologist. The A says and total uh, both agree in, uh, let's say, 30 cases. Both agrees in case wise, we are talking about in 10 cases. And when the pharmacologist says, no, don't give, gynec wants to give, there are such uh, 15 cases. Our online classes, you know. And uh, here is pharmacologist says yes, and the gynecologist says uh, no, I, do, I would not give. And there are certain, uh, let's say, around uh, five cases. And then we need to find out how much is the agreement between this uh, two percent, the gynecologist and the pharmacologist. Then we can go for one is gynecologist and another is physician. That way we can go in comparing and how much is the agreement between two that we can find out. So before I go for the uh, explaining this, try to find out in your case, in your uh, setup, what kind of uh, example you can cite. At least one person should come out with that. Write down in chat box, what example?
at least write down in chat box ke no idea so that i understand that whether you are active or not or you are listening or not very good someone else another one person at least someone else out of 18 students at least write down no idea in chat box if you are attending wonderful so now uh, dr anuj at least you can find out two person for example husband and wife they are taking a judgment about whether to go for sari sari to be purchase or not to be purchase. one say yes there's a no so anything two persons opinion we want to compare how many times they say yes how many times they say no and sometimes yes and no etc this is our list very good that you have uh, written so now let's go over here in uh, you all of you have got this uh, excel file so this is a cohes kappa mesus agreement between two rates raters raters means two person who are saying yes or no and just listen carefully or the understand this uh this is a k p k p e probability probability of a probability of e one minus probability of e now here a is agreement and e is expected agreement by chance how much agreement would be there that is a e so even even if you take anything without two person independently if you talk about certain things then also by chance uh, there will be a uh, agreement no and that is a random agreement so this is a agreement and probably agreement now you need to remember that one is a 100% agreement or one so in that way you are minus doing random agreement why because total agreement you want to find out because of a reason how much is a because of reason. so that's why you are removing that factor and in this case agreement here also because you have removed from the denominator you have removed from numerator also so is like this that if random agreement is 10% for example and uh, the agreement is let's say 40% then 10% agreement means 100 minus 10 that is a 90% out of 90% which is a possible uh, that is a non random because of some reason out of the the a was uh, suppose if it is a 40 then 40 minus 10 50 50 minus 10 and that is to be kept over here so you can find out that out of the real agreement because of the judgment how much it is there if it is a 90 possible out of the it is 30 that is 30 upon 90 that will be the k so for that purpose now you have probably realized that pa is agreement pe is probability of random agreement even without any reason if you go for two person opinion then opinion will have some kind of random agreement will be there now once you put the figures over here automatically it gives kappa over here 0.27 that means agreement is much less only 0.3 or so now if you increase the figure over here agreement for example 50 and keep it here only 5 then you can see the agreement is increase 0.76 agreement is increased both saying yes both saying no that has increased as compared to the total now i stop here if you have any questions so far i can answer that and then go for the next step any question okay probably no now let look at over here yes and if you look at the yes and this is a figure d11 by f11 if you see the d11 it is over here and e11 e11 
uh, F11. F11 is over here. So 35 is a D11 and F11 is a 90. So just you need to understand that total observations were 90. Out of this 90, 35 times the A says that yes, right? Yes. And in this case, no. No is F11 or E11 by F11. E11 is 55 upon 90. So this A rater, A rater says that uh, no, how many times out of 90? 55 times. So, similarly, this B rater is out of 35 upon 90. This many is a probability of yes and probability of no by the B rater. This is no is 55 divided by 90. So, what this yes, A, no, A, yes, B, no, B says that these are the probability which they will be telling rater A and rater B, yes and no. That is their probability out of total. How many times they are going to say yes? How many times they are going to say no? So four figure, these four figures, you have probably understood. For rater A, probability is 35 out of 90 for yes, 55 90 for the no. Similarly for rater B, 35 upon 90 and for no, 55 upon 90. So these are the figures which now these are the probabilities how frequently they will be telling yes and no. Now, what is the probability that both will say yes? Because these are probabilities. So by, if you want to find out both saying yes, then at that time, this is the end. A will also say yes and B also say will yes. So when there is a both, when we use the word end, at that time we multiply the probability or we do the summation of pro probability right in the chat box. I repeat, when there is a end, rater A also, yes, multiple. So you are multiply that. And because you are multiplying it, this is a multiplication probability that both will say yes is L6 into L8. That is, is L6 into 8. That means that is a probability. Both say yes is a 0 0.15. 0 0.15 means out of 100 such cases, 15% of the times both will say yes. That is a probability. Is the probability in any case this will happen. And probability of saying no is multiplication of no into no. This is how you'll be able to find out. So this till now you found out that this much you can know. What is the question? That how much is the agreement between these two gentlemen or gentlewomen? Now we see the how to calculate out of this. We go for the probability of agreement. And this is calculated by D9 plus E10 divided by F11. I repeat, D9 is how much? Is 30. And E10, E10 is 50. Right? See, both this contribute to the agreement. This is a 30 and 50. Here both says no. Here both says yes. So 30 plus 50. That is D9 and E10. And that is to be divide, divided by F11. That means out of 90 people, 90 observations, both agrees for 80 things. And that's why the agreement is 0.88. Now, look at this random agreement. So random agreement is L10 plus L11. So, L10 is over here, 10 and L11. 
this is what what does it mean this means that randomly also probability that together without any reason the probability that both says oh, yes and both say no is make between these two so that figure comes over here p e i repeat that random agreement random agreement how we are getting it both will say yes both will say no that we have multiplied and then found that this is a random agreement by which anyway without any reason there will be agreement and here this 30 and 50 that we say that they have agreed out of this now we'll further calculate k value and k value as you know this is a k value what it is c is c13 minus c14 so c13 minus c14 we see this over here the random agreement we are removing from the agreement and we divide by 1 minus c14 this is a random agreement that we are removing from the one so it essentially says that that out of total random agreement is removed so what is remaining is the part which has to be agreed by some reason between the two person and denominator also you remove the random agreement component so you get exclusively agreement component this is how you are getting it if you suppose remove the figure over you suppose put your zero over here and put zero over here so what will happen it will be 100 percent agreement like one so if this happens then then you will see that agreement reduces if you still increase this 15 and 15 still it reduces you reduce this 20 and 10 you can see very very hardly there is any agreement between the two so this is how we calculate the kappa one means complete agreement zero means no agreement and now if you if you are intelligent enough you should ask me one question which i will not be able to answer the study will be over only if you ask me a question which i don't answer then the our study is over because that question is to be found out by the students so you can progress uh, beyond that so any question on this if you understood not understood, any point uh, i can explain you that but this kappa agreement will be very good so uh the uh, so so at least right you understood or partially understood or not understood in in a chat box to me it's very simple in which type of study we can use it partially understood okay which kind of study see is a is nothing like a case control study or cohort study or let's say uh, the uh, cross section study like that but then this data you can arrive from the cross section study but here the purpose is different here the purpose is the judgment of two person you want to compare and when you want to compare the judgment of the two person you will have a data like this uh, uh, let me make it clear how you can have such a kind of data so that you will have data like this uh, the person a uh, let me say the karmic person let's say this is a dynamic person and we give them a case one, give them case two, give them case three. And this also happens while paper checking or anything like that. So this farming person say yes, yes, say no, yes. Then say no, yes, is yes. Something like this. The data will look like this. Yes and no. And then you are going to use a table command in the AP info. We'll tell the use this table command and we'll find out what is the uh, reason. And some of you might be knowing about the insert the uh, pivot table in which uh, insert pivot table you might be using like this. 
uh, insert bio table, then you can uh, get the source. Set up here. So yeah. It will look like this. Yes, no, etc. And then from that also you can uh, take value to the kappa. So this is how you can do your study and we'll go to the again go back to this so uh, any other things so what does negative sign indicate uh, negative sign descriptive study data analysis it can be used descriptive study analysis it can be used uh, the uh, any kind of study what you are going to compare to, so when we have two variables uh, we can use it uh, uh, to compare, you can use separately. Let's say for the two judgment is about the diagnosis on anemia, yes or no, and then the pneumonia, yes or no. But both you need to uh, do it separately. And then the, this, what does negative sign indicate? Where is the negative sign? I have not seen the negative sign or anywhere. Is the only thing the negative sign is a one minus in the, this minus. This is basically removing this factor, the factor of the random agreement you are removing. That's all. Otherwise, there is no negative sign anywhere over here. Uh, you can speak out if you have found out negative sign somewhere. Uh, what does negative sign indicate? Negative will not be there. It is not possible negative sign. Because even if you write something over here, it will go to the zero. For example, here I say zero. Uh, and I put zero over here. It is a 0 0.81 meter. It uh, is like I would go for 20, 20 and here. Yeah, I agree. I have never tried this hmm. negative one. Yeah, 100% disagreement. Yes. So negative sign, I, I, uh, I have never tried this. That be 100% uh, you disagree. Both are in opposite direction, right? So the, the negative sign, I totally agree. I, they have not written over here, but they should have written that if it's a minus one, it's 100% disagreement. It's not, if zero is there, it's a no agreement. Thank you very much. Who did that? Uh, may I know the name of Dr. Tushar? Thank you very much. So uh, we could find out this. Uh, the value of the negative sign is total disagreement. You can you change the various uh, parameter over here, and we'll come to know that what it is. And I think in our file, I should uh, write over here k is equal to if it's a minus one, minus one. It is hundred percent disagreement. Total disagreement. Okay, and anything else. Uh, if it is 0.5, then what will be the interpretation? Half agreement. That's all. Half agreement. Now, some of you want to find out whether this agreement is statistically significant or not. Then what will be your answer? For statistically significant, you, if you want to find out, then you should have a pair of examiners or pair of uh, the, the uh, judgment uh, givers. And those pairs, from that you will be able to find out the 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 like that. From there you can find out the mean and standard deviation, find out who is the outliers, super agreement or uh, super disagreement like that. So that, that we can find out, but usually this is used to compare judgment between two people.
Now, uh, shall I go to the next uh, uh, parametric, uh, non-parametric test so that uh, uh, we can use that also. So switching to the next, there is a, this is a over, let me see. A uh, question, all of you have seen this file, but if you have not seen this file, try to use this question. This is a seventh session. And at least I expect, uh, not on Wednesday, but at least next Monday, all the, your questions you should be uh, you should be sharing with the uh, groups or your subgroups, and then at least few can be with the major. So you the, it's very clear what is your hypothesis mean and what is your hypothesis subsidiary hypothesis. So both hypothesis once you write subsidiary hypothesis could be two three four, while main hypothesis could be one or at, at the most two, right? And then you try to go your question, multiple choice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm not going to in detail of this question, but you can see this file and prepare your question. Then today, what I'm going to go for two important tests: Kuskal Wallis test, and then we'll go for Man Whitney test. Wilkinson sign rank test is also very important, but we'll be able to cover next time. But then Kuskal Wallis test, let's go for this right now. I hope all of you are able to see the screen. And uh, I, I would mention that Dr. Divakar Sharma. See, initially what happened that uh, we were knowing uh, about the... Just a minute. Um, Initially, uh, uh, we learned about the uh, parametric test and only few non-parametric tests. But then Dr. Divakar Sharma is a statistician. He was there with me at Walsart. And he taught me all this, uh, the non-parametric tests, which are very, very interesting. And I think now it should be a part of a course of at least the PSM curriculum, because these are really useful. and. Uh, yeah, my screen is switching. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Kruskal Wallis at test is a non parameter test procedure that can be used to compare more than two population in a completely randomized design. So, you have only four people in each group or only 10 people in each group. For example, you are giving the uh, advice about only advice about the lifestyle change other you group you give a diet plus uh, medicine third group you have let's say the only homeopathic medicine the fourth group is only ayurvedic medicine or different regimen you have only five or six cases in each uh, the uh, group then what do you do so at that time what we are doing the uh, the small samples we are ranking it and then we'll make a total so that at least it comes to around 10, 15, 30, 40 like this. It's very interesting. If you just keep a concentrated eyes, you will be able to understand with a very first go. We use the sums of the ranks of the case samples to compare the distribution. Distribution means the, the what is the expected distribution and what is actual distribution that we are going to compare in this critical Wallis test. And just like a, we have a Z formula, all of you know that Z is equal to like that and the standard is equal to that. So similarly, it's not that a difficult test, it's just we have a H test and we have a formula for that. Now, how they are derived at the formula, we, we just need to uh, the, drive the Mercedes and know how to drive the Mercedes. How they are prepared, but we are we not uh, worried about it. Yes, if there is a problem in between, uh, what could be the problem? So similarly, in the while understanding the H test, what does it mean that we should be knowing it? So rank the total measurements in all the case samples from one to n, and tied observation are assigned average of the ranks they would have gotten if not tied. That I will explain. 
So, if we have k number of samples for second, third, fourth, for each there could be the summation. And that summation we need to square by dividing the number. And this formula looks so odd and difficult. But the moment we jump to the next slide, it will make everything clear. No, it's so simple. What Nal I will say is that all the distribution is almost identical distribution, while the HA says that out of four distribution, or that is four sample, at least one sample is uh, different than others, rest of the things that uh, H test will tell us. So, this we can find out from the chi square distribution. And degree of freedom here, if you have four samples, five samples, six samples, you just do minus one because that is what you are near to your the expectation. So degree of freedom will be k minus one if the k numbers of samples. Suppose you are comparing the 10 sets of data, for example, 10 hospitals and outcome uh, the you, you have, let's say, a special reading, then in that case, uh, you have degree of freedom will be k minus 1, 10 minus 1 is 9 will be the degree of freedom. And then p distribution you will be finding from the chi square table. Now, all this theory will become so simple when you have this example in front of you. So, there are four groups of students. This is a group 1, group 2, group 3, and group 4. First group, there Marks are there. Test score 65, 87, 73, 79. Second group is this, third, fourth. This could be a let's say a pulse rate, even group one, two, three, four. Or we can have let's say a hemoglobin level, or you can say the number of recovery in days. So you have such a sample where you have the variables which is a which you can measure the variables. In this, how do we proceed? So, even you can have teaching methods. So, total you have four groups. So, rank the 16 measurement 1 to 16. So, total measurement are 16. So, the total and how do we give the rank? This is a, how we give. So, 59 was the lowest. So, we give the first. Then, second one, 62. Third one, 65. This is how we are giving the ring. I just give a pause for one or two minutes. What we are doing that we had this data. Four groups are there. Let's say four teaching methods. Marks are different. 59, 78 like this. So the lowest mark we are giving the rank as first then the second, third, fourth, like this, we are giving the rank. So, the, I, I, if you have any problem uh, in understanding this much, you can write in chat box. So, I think no problem. Then, uh, the next step is, this is a TI. This means total of one, total of two, total of three, total of four. I is stands for which number of the sample total. First, second, third, fourth, like that. Next is the distribution of the scores are the same and different. This is you need to say whether it is different or similar. That we need to find out. This is what the formula says. The H is equal to 12 divided by N into big n plus 1. So what is n over here? Can someone tell, will tell me what is the sample size over here? Can someone tell me? 16, ah. sir. If two students get the same mark, no problem. You, you repeat that to the, uh, the, the score. Instead of this, let's say, if you have given a 1 or 2 like this, you, you go on increasing the number. Even if two are, are the same, it doesn't matter. You can you can give it, it. It will happen like that. You go on the writing the uh, the number, uh, the serial number which you are giving. You continue with that. 
because see, in this case, we are how many sample size is there? Uh, somebody writes 16, right? 16. So uh, it, it will go like that 16, it will go up to 16, right? So now, uh, if you have understood this much, so 12 upon, uh, I need to move this uh, somehow. Okay, 12 and into bracket n plus 1. That means 16 into 70. Then summation ti upon ni. So 31 square, 35 square, 15 square, 55 square. Uh, and uh, this, I uh, how do I move this? I don't know. Uh, this mark, and I move this. Uh, I need to understand this. So let me do like this. Um, okay, so here 16 into 70, then total ni. So how many uh, cells were there? So, four, so divided by four and minus three. 3 is a constant already they are given and total sample is 17. So total is 8.96. I repeat what they did over here. So 12 is given, 3 is given. You should uh, know that n is 16 into n plus 1, that is 17. Then ni, how many series is 4? And TI square 31, 35, 15, and 55, the square of each one of that. That, and if you go for the calculation, you have the file with you. So now we are interested in 8.96 is the H value. Now, this H value, how do you say that it is statistically significant or not? Where do we compare? So before we go for H value, I hope you understood this formula. If not understood, then you write in the chat box. Sir, in the TI, why are we taking uh, the ranks as uh, T? Why aren't we taking the total number of marks they have got? Because marks you are not able to compare in very small uh, size, right? And that's why they go for the rank. Because okay. if you go for, let's say, the actual value, right? Then, and what you want, we want to have a distribution. See, okay, distribution sir. you can compare, see, rank 1, 2, 3, 4, like that, etc. So suppose if someone has like marks like 100, 110, 130, 140, like that, right? So within that, the continuous of the ranking will be there. It will not be uh, distorted like anything. So if he wants to find out whether the ranking which you are giving is homogeneously distributed or not, because marks may differ, but the ranking which you are giving is based on the, uh, it, it is respective of the value you are giving a rank. Okay, sir. Yeah, it, it could be suppose instead of 59, if it is only two marks, what will happen? It will uh, the uh, make the difference, lot of difference. It will affect your the distribution. That's why they are in a ring. And these statistical tests are developed after a long uh, struggle because they want to find out that why, why this, uh, how do we evaluate this, this kind of things? So any other question? So formula is not difficult, right? It's very simple. And you have now file with you. So if in actually practice, if you, if you come across this kind of the uh, study, you'll be able to compare. Because for uh, if you want to apply over here, uh, F test, suppose we in this all group, we have a hundred, hundred uh, samples in each group. And we have the same uh, things. We'll simply go for the F test. What you are going to do that, the your data it, it will be like this that uh, the, uh, the first group one two three four like this then the uh, the observation will be there so you will have only two columns and then the ap info automatically will uh, the go for the analysis uh, in, in this case so first column will be which method one two three four second column will be what marks that's all 
you have around 400 data with you and directly if you apply means command means marks against the group you will get the f test automatically so write somewhere how to apply f test and use the means command we'll be using some time so the next thing would be this result is 8.96 now what we are doing that if you look at the a chi square table degree of freedom 3 then you will see the p value is 7.81 that means up to 7.81 can happen by chance but this has gone beyond that 8.96 so we can say that the h0 right is uh, to be rejected and we say that there is some uh, differences in the uh, teaching methods and uh, we can see the reason. This is how this test interprets. In chi-square, we are looking at the chi-square value versus the degree of freedom. We are here use the chi-square table itself, but and degree of freedom also we are using it. But the value instead of chi-square value, we are going for h value. So basically, this is a non-parameter test. Wherever there is the measurements are there, and sample size is small, then you can use it or sometimes your measurement are arbitrary and you have a sample size a little bit more, less or more, you, you may not be able to do uh, the F-test at the time you can use this test. So I hope that this you have understood. You, you need not uh, to remember the, the formulas, but you should have understood the, how to apply this formula. So, Shall we go to the next parametric test? Okay, let me move further. So, Pascal voice test, it is very simple and easy. Agreed? Or confused? Not answering. So, at least I didn't check box. Understood, not understood, partially understood about Pascal Wallace test because you are supposed to teach others. Mm, no answer. Not understood. That means okay. We go for the next, and uh, that is that is the. Um, we'll go like this. Partially understood. So. Mm, Test. Now we are going for man witness test. Now, next time when we go, we'll be going for Wilcoxon sign tests also. But the, this is very interesting this LQS uh, loss quality assessment test. Suppose you have a big area like the Bihar, or you have, let's say, a 10 lakh population, and you want to do a rapid survey just very few sample and you want to talk about the whole the population at that time this this is a very good method which will be uh, which you will be using only you select the 19 subject and there's a cutoff line of 12 and 7 and you will be talking about the population very rapid method and very scientific method so next time you read that so uh, currently i'm going for man with test which is also very simple test not at all difficult, right? So uh, again, taught to me by the Divakar Sharma, and if it is uh, possible, I will uh, bring him to the stage sometime, and also we'll have Dr. Neeraj Pandit talking to us about the how to use a Zotero software uh, for uh, the the automatic review of literature, etc. So that will uh, decide, but then. Uh, for now, uh, it's also used as Wilcoxon Sankram test, but then let's go for man with me at present, comparing two groups by ranks. So again, we are comparing two groups. And when you have a very small sample or the uh, data is not uh, capable, you need to just uh, rank the data. And uh, T-test, when you compare, you have data 30, 40, and you can just data and you are 
let's say uh, using right or you are using f test to compare the two things but you have a very small data over here so you use man litany test here the assumption is samples are randomly selected from two independent population and represent of the population for example you want to compare the one ward with other ward you have a few samples right and here uh, the, it need not uh, compared each one to one comparison like t-test you have you have uh, read maybe about a pair t-test right is not the pairing is not there over here and it's uh, normally also not distributed you can see the data and you will understand uh, we have two data set over here i hope that you take a deep breath and you come out of the crucial voice test and this is another data set that was a different here is also a different data set and then here the five four three five four this is the data here is another sample of uh, the data and this is basically two data sets available to you in this case seven are there in this case only six are there and we need to compare whether these two data set are significantly different from each other or not. The first step what we are doing, just see what we are doing over here. We are giving a rank. Somebody was asking if these are two are seeing what will you do? You give the, the next number. So one, two, three, four, five like this. So total numbers are 13. So we have given 13 numbers. So I, I make a pause over here. This is a first data set. This is a second data set. Now you are you have given a rank to it. Understood this much? Okay. So next. So suppose so first one was a first, another one was a second, then second was a third number. Uh, then the, another second was a fourth number. After second, third is a fifth number, like this. Same third, sixth number. So 1 to 13, the rank was given. There's some check blocks. A ranking should be from data set having a lesser number. It is not, not like that. You take a, so the smallest number. Out of this, you pick up which is the sm smallest number. You start with that. It is not the number over here, less is over here, but see one is over here. Suppose one was over here, then we would have started from that. See, when you give a rank, we just believe that these all the 13 are of a same, same uh, continuous numbers. Like that you write down. You need not first do this and then the, the, this data set. It is all the set are homogeneous and you start giving a rank like that. Okay, so you, you can see the largest number is 5 and that number has got 13. But the same 5 has got 12 number also, same 5, 11 also, because this can happen, the data set. So you give the rank from this to this. So the next step is very interesting and simple. Harmonize ranks where the same value occurs more than once. So, for example, 2 is occurring twice, 1 is occurring twice, 4 is occurring 4 times. So, how do we do the harmonization? Harmonization is a very simple process whereby you take the mean of those values, right? So, let's see like that. Mean of the ranks you are taking over here. See like this. So in harmonization, what we are doing, that here, if you look at the 4 was having 9, 4 was in 10, 4 was in 8, like this. This 4 was in 7. Now just try to understand, any 4, we should have a same value over here. So what we are doing, the 4 was having 10, 9, 8, and eight, uh, uh, the uh, 4, and the 10, 9, 8, and 7. So what you do, 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, this is four times it is there. So divide by four. So 9 plus 7, 16 plus 8, 24, 
plus 10, 34, 34 divided by 4 times. So, 8.5. So, this 4 rank, everywhere it is for 8.5, 8.5. Harmonization means you give equal weightage if the data set is same. So, this much, any question? Suppose 1 was twice, right? It was given 1 and 2. But then in, in a newer, uh, when we are harmonize the ranks, we are going 1.5 to each one of that. So, uh, let me look at the chat box. In ascending order, we should have to arrange the data. Yes, no, need not. you keep data as it is. But while you give, go on increasing the number, that is how you give the rank to it. Now, the whole process is, is giving off a rank. Why we do that? Because it is difficult to work with the, the original data we give a ring and then work upon on the ring. That is the well, that is the greatness of status six. Now, this uh, we should uh, we should have some time to think over this uh, uh, file, and we'll come back again to this, so that uh, at this juncture you will not understand what does it mean. This is Rx is basically a total of ranks. Ry is a second group total. And if you have done it correctly or not, that means n, n plus 1, that you need to multiply by this 2 and divide by this 2. In our case, what was the n? How much was the n? Total n is 13. We had a 13 data, right? Total data set, if you group 1 and 2, 7 plus 6 is 13. So, this total of the ranks, right? The total of the ranks we have done over here, we'll see over here. So, 67 is a total, this is the first data set. So, the if you total make a total of the rank, it is a 67. Rx is a first group is x, second group is y. So, you are making a total of the ranks that Rx is 67, Ry is 24. And then, whether you have done it correctly or not, for that matter, your Rx plus Ry is 91. Now, this should be equivalent to, what was the n? It was a 13. So, n plus 1 means 14. So, 13 plus 14, 13 multiplied by 14 divided by 2 will also be 91. This is check whether you have done properly or not. I again repeat, we are doing Rx plus Ry, and then that will be 13 into 14, the other two. Both should be equal to find out whether you have done the right thing or not. And then for calculating Ux and Uy, that will be looking a bit later on. So, this formula for ux, look at this, nx into ny plus nx, nx plus 1 divided by 2 and then minus rx. This rx and ry, I hope you have understood. And now, we go for nx and ny. This nx and ny are nothing but the total number of x and total number of y. You can see in this formula, this x is and y, so 6 into 7. So that is nx and ny, simple size, right? Then 7 into 8, that is nx into nx plus 1, right? So that is what you have got that 7 plus 7 plus 1. So 7 into 8 that they are doing it. Look at this formula over here. Right? And then the minus 67 and 624 is also there. Divide by 2 is also there in the same formula. So just try to understand what is ux and uy. So it's uh, given by a formula. See, the, for ux and uy, both nx and ny remains the same. But in ux, you do nx into nx plus 1. That is a 7 into 8. For here, in ny, ny plus 1, you do 
6 into 7 divided by 2. So, once we find out, you need to calculate whatever is a lower, that value you need to calculate in the formula. Since ux is equal to 3 and ui is equal to 39, which one is lower? 3. So, that is to be used in the final formula. So, I pause over here for a second. Any questions so far? Sir, which type of uh, data uh, in which we can calculate this man Whitney U test? Yeah. I mean, why, why, why we have taken the data in two columns? If we are yeah. taking it as a whole, then like, a, those two yeah. columns mean what? So basically, you have the uh, ranks, for example, uh, you have two data set, right? Uh, one thing is you have the uh, students uh, and how much rank they got. And second also, student how much rank they got. So the uh, equivalence is the same for them, the group uh, batch A and batch B. For them... But in batch A, there were seven students and in batch B, there were only six students. Even, even there are three students, there are nine students. That is the beauty of this non parametric test. Here you are not supposed to have the normal distribution at all. So, and you want to compare whether these two groups are performing the same or they are performing differently. So, okay. Okay. so, so can we say that if there are students and they are being taught by the same teacher? Yes, yeah, so to may, okay. may, may be a different teacher, but okay. the ranking method was the same. When okay. they were ranked, no, they, the ranking method was the same. Or even you forget the ranking. You just say that how many subjects they passed, how many subjects they failed. Suppose there are, let's say, five subjects, right? First yes. data set X and second is B, is a Y. In X out of seven, five students, uh, the out of seven, let's say three students pass in all the five subjects. Three students find four subjects, one student find three subjects. While in Y, out of five subjects, people still pass in three, pass in two, four like this. Now, we want to compare whether these two results are significantly different or not. So these data, five, four, well, they represent some kind of quantitative value, but not that much like no, the hemoglobin or lot like that. So in this case, uh, you even if you go for the means and et cetera, it, is, it will not be valid in such a small test. So you should imagine that the, you have two data set, but what happens in the clinics, this happens. You have only seven patients or eight patients and recovery number of days, for example. In X ward, number of uh, recovery in how many days this much? In Y, number of recovery in this much. So in that case, recovery in one day, recovery in two days will be much appreciable compared to the, those other things. But we, we, are, we are worried about as a statistician whether the difference is significant or not between series X and series Y. This is the beauty of the test. Test will tell you whether the signal is different or not. Then interpretation is to be done by the clinician, which one is good, which one is not good. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes. So here, where uh, the uh, men with interest will tell us how to do it. Now, in this UX and UI, you are getting, going for a smaller amount, right? And the reason why we go for the smaller amount is over here. So that you, you get the uh, minimum uh the uh, you know the denominator you will get minimum right that's why you take less because ultimately this test that is you if you are given u value alone you will not be able to interpret from the tables while in this case you convert into the z test we talked about the uh, five types of z test right there's a sixth type of z test where you are going to use z table and you will have your interpretation see Status is very interesting. Very interesting, provided you start to understand each and every step. Then uh, you will be able to enjoy. Yeah, in such a small series, also you will be able to do it. And many times we have spent a lot of money. Just uh, we don't do the research because you know such a small symbol. What do we do? It's not like that. So in this case, uh, we have seen this right, and the z value. This is a square root, right? N1, N2, all this probably now you know it. 
and the answer is 2.5 cents. Z is more than 2, that means difference is significant. There's a significant difference between two series. So, any question on this? Uh, you, you need not... uh, there was written that uh, if we compare it with the critical value, so which table do we have to look and what is that critical value? Critical right. value is the same thing. No, the, the, you have the Z value. In Z table, you go for the, the where does it the 0 0.05 lies. If you look at the Z table, if it is a 2, then it is a 0 0.05. It is more than that. The, the P value is less than 0 0.05. That means it is significantly different. The you just remember first or second lecture or p value. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So whenever it says critical value, the suppose if you have chosen uh, point zero one, then in that case you you choose accordingly the z value three or more. Right. It depends on your study. But usually we go five point zero five. Now at international level also, we are now not looking at the p-value, we are looking at the range of the p-value rather than the p-value alone. That also uh, is going like that. And you can see the, the columns uh, having a smaller, the tall towers, small towers of uh, range, giving a range also. So uh, we'll uh, stop here. And the, the, the session is open for question and answer. You can ask any question. And I hope that you will the, uh, do the uh, uh, exercise on this also. And any question? A little bit uh, tricky, but all these three trees, Kappa, Tuskal Wallis, and Men Whitney. Tomorrow, if you go through it, then probably it will be easier for you to apply in your uh, practice, practical life. And uh, next, we'll be going for the uh, the LQS and the Wilkinson sand rank test. They are also again uh, very useful. And uh, I expect that we uh, will be uh, having the projects. If you some of you have written a project and the, you started doing itself, but few are uh, even not attending the sessions. I don't know. Oh, whether they are interested or not. But then uh, I expect that all of you to teach at least 10 students. Then you can join us as a faculty uh, for the online offline because we are planning that we should have the, uh, the core group of statistician and each state and who will be taking it not only to the PG students but in future to the UG students also. Uh, and uh, as I'm approaching, I'm be completing 62 years in near future. I thought whatever my understanding is there, let us share with the people so that uh, it can move further to the postgraduate at least. And AP info should be taught right from the first MBBS. Uh, our in Sola Medical College, our first MBBS student, they started learning AP info because it's so simple, right? So I hope that by end of uh, the next lecture, everyone will be uh, well versed with AP. Any question or shall I stop? At least you should write down in chat box something that again, partially understood, fully understood, not understood. And then I will stop. Uh, uh, someone should write in, in chat box. Out of 16 people, no one is writing in chat box. What happens? You are so inactive. Okay, thank you. Yeah, try to database that you have for your own thesis. It will be very good if you apply your know, database rather than uh, having a hypothetical database, right? Yeah, more case-based application, yes. But then you, you, you uh, try to do in your smaller groups, and that will be good. Thank you. Stop saying.